Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at another one in the ASIO Cascade lines. This is the ASIO Cascade 98. ASIO? ASIO? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I know a couple of different languages that sometimes my brain wants to pronounce them all in the same number of languages at the same time. It just messes things up. I recently reviewed the 75% version of this, and I was actually quite impressed with how well it was built. Um, I think they started doing uh, manufacturing um, membrane keyboards, but all of their keyboards are very stylish, and they currently have, um, for pre-order, or I know that it's it's not yet out, but they have Cascade low profiles, or both the 98 and the 75, but they're not available yet. Um, I will I will be looking out to see if I can take a look at those when they're available. Um, there are some low profiles have made a huge jump in the last few years. Uh, for a while, really, the only low profile choice was Keychron, and not for nothing, it was during the period that their um, their quality control wasn't as good as it's gotten now. They have definitely have improved from that time. Anyway, ASIO sent me out this keyboard as they did the 75 for me to take a look at it. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got in this. It's a 98%. It's not, it's not an 1800. Um, and it does have a slightly different layout. And eh, should be interesting. All right, before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what we have included. We have your standard wire, keycap, and key switch puller. We have a nice, hefty rubberized USB-C to USB-C with an A adapter on it. Oh, that's nice. It's nice quality. It doesn't feel cheap and plasticky. Um, it's even got like a little metal rim around it. Oh, I like that. I, I do wish though that manufacturers would add a tail to this. Um, Royal Kludge, Red Dragon, other companies, um, they include a little tail that's connected to this and holds this so in case you don't need it it'll just hang there out of the way but when you do need it it's there but when it's not connected the chances of losing it are big so hopefully as you you guys hear that and i mean it doesn't have to be a permanent one it could be something that you could take off but at least having the option of something to hold it there so you don't lose it that's a great thing and here we are the asio cascade 98 now, I've got to say, I actually like this, um, I almost want to call it a brutalistic design. Uh, the lines are, are different uh, than most keyboards you would find. It is a floating key design, which I'm not usually the biggest fan of, but when it's done right, I do like it. Um, as you can see, we have a slightly different layout. Um, we have your single 1U modifiers on the right here with the arrow key cluster like really up against it, um, which I kind of prefer it to be extended out because I'm going to be, my fingers are going to be searching and it's going to be like, well, hey, these are 1Us, these are 1, you know? So where's that separation so that I can find it when I'm down here? I'm going to have to look for the shift key and then find myself to the arrow cues. So now, not for nothing, it usually doesn't take that long to get used to a slightly modified uh, layout, though. When they put the function key or change this right control key for something else, that's when I can't, I just can't deal with that. Anyway, we don't have that here. We do have a navigation column that's just basically at the end of the keyboard. We have your one point, I want to say that's a 1.25 uh, U. Um, shift key it does look a little bit smaller um, i will have to look that up to make sure but we do have rf which is radio frequency the 2.4 and we have the three bluetooth device slots as well as usb mode i'm guessing that printing function and escape will show you the battery power but we do have a handy dandy little little nifty quick start guide which i'm very appreciative when companies include this so it tells you the basic uh, functionality. It looks like on the back we have a switch for wireless or wired. And then, oh, 
there is our 2.4 gigahertz dongle yes thank you i prefer it when the dongles can be stored on the keyboard itself i have i literally in almost every room in my house i have random dongles just sitting there because they've they didn't come attached with the keyboard and i was like oh, i'll set it here and i'll remember it'd be interesting to write a piece of software to be able to plug these in and kind of get more information for it to kind of figure out what it goes to because a lot of times it'll just say generic usb or keyboard usb but doesn't tell you the manufacturer so i love it when they have this manufacturers should always whether it's a plastic case or a metal case they really need to include a 2.4 gigahertz dongle in there. One thing that I do like, and I think a lot of people are going to like, especially if you're getting this to replace a full-size keyboard, is that you have that full-size zero. Now, I've gotten so used to, I always just go towards the corner to press those zero because I'm going to catch it if it's the 1U or I'm going to catch it if it's the 2U. So, no, no big deal for me. But I know for a lot of people, that is important. We have a numlock key, which, well, okay, we have an indicator whether you're in PC or Mac, or if you're, and if you're wireless as well as if the battery's charging. Um, that's your win key. And I'm going to guess that it has. Mm, all right, FN and home switches to Mac or PC, depending on what you want to do. All right, there it is. So I always prefer a hardware switch, but this is fairly easy right there. So I'm going to let it slide. But usually I think it's best to have the hardware switch so that people aren't going, hey, my Windows key doesn't work if it's, you know, on Mac. And But this one having the indicator, I think it's going to be, it's almost the same as having a hardware switch. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. If I can find a keycap puller. Let's look at these stabilizers. All right. Now, this is one thing that they had with the Cascade 75, that they also have with the 98, that you still do not see that often, though we're starting to see it a little bit more and more, is PCB screw-in stabilizers. Look at that. I mean, that's just... I think it's awesome. I, I, I can't tell you how nice it is to see off-the-shelf keyboards that have screw and stabilizers. Now, this is an aluminum top plate or top case with an integrated plate. Uh, the bottom is plastic, but this top is aluminum, so we're basically de dealing with an aluminum plate. So if you like the sound of aluminum plates, oh, wait a minute. Never, it's got a little bit of stickiness to it. Maybe it's not, because the other one did not magnetize. Is this one actually steel? I might be, I might have misspoken here. Let me go and take a look at their webpage real quick. All right, it does state that the aluminum top plates are interchangeable to customize the base of your keyboard. The reason I use magnets is because when you have a steel plate, see this, this is an aluminum case. It doesn't stick. It's non-ferrite, so it doesn't. Um, it doesn't. Magnets don't attract to it. It's aluminum, but there is. I don't know if it's because this might be a because uh, it's sticking a little bit, but it's. I, I don't think this is can be an alloy of steel and aluminum so I'm um, and to the plate it's definitely sticking so all right so yeah so it does not seem to be integrated so the plate does seem to be below here the other one was an integrated single piece but here see that's not an aluminum plate so I'm trying to understand what's going on here because I mean Okay, the top case is aluminum. That, see, it's sticking there. So, what's going on? I, I, I'm not sure, honestly, what's going on. But, I do know that magnets don't stick to aluminum. So, 
I'll have to reach out to them and get some clarification on that because I don't know. And if they have interchangeable plates, I don't see anything about them here. Now, these are also available in bare bones, which is quite interesting. Um, and they do have quite a number of uh, keycap sets that are available. So, and they, there are two uh, colors, Space Gray Galaxy Dark and Space Gray Galaxy Light. And they each have their own uh, set of keycaps. This one is the Space Gray Galaxy Dark. So it it speaks to the color of the case. No, actually, the color of the case is the same. It only speaks to... Yeah, they're both space gray. And then Galaxy Dark and Galaxy Light is the name of the keycaps. All right, I got that one figured out. Let's see what we've got here. I believe these are Gatoron Pro switches. Yep, absolutely no pain. Sounds and feels like a Gatoron Brown. So we do have these uh, Gatoron Brown Pros. Uh, you have Brown Pros and Red Pros to choose from on these. So taking a look at the PCB, we do not have a IPX sheet. There's just nothing. It's just the PCB. We do have North Facing. But again, like I said, we have screw-in stabilizers. And they do come lightly pre-lubed, but they are very nice and smooth. Now let's take a look here. So between the plate and the PCB, it looks like we have a nice bit of dense foam. And then... I don't know if that's the battery. Let me try a different spot. All right, there is. There does seem to be some sort of foam down below, though it's quite below down there feels a little dense we'll have to check it out when i come back to this because i will be coming back to modding it and i'm going to reach out to them about a different plate because if there are different plate options like a pc plate i'd love to give that a try now let's see what we have with these keycaps they are shine through double shot and do they say see they say that it's an aluminum upper body but i think it's the steel inside that's or it's the plate that's steel. So, but it, it says aluminum top plate. So I don't know if they're talking about the plate or they're talking about the top half of the case. They need to clarify that. And for the key caps. All right, so we have ABA. These are ABS, uh, shine through double shot, laser etched font. And they are one point three millimeters. Body thickness of these are one point three millimeters, which it's at least above one. One is kind of like my cutoff. Anything below one is like eh, no. It's a little too thin. It's going to be too plasticky. It has an interesting sound. It actually, it sounds different than what I remember with the 75. Um, the keycaps do have pretty much all of the secondary functionality already listed out here. Um, I do like when they allow for the number pad and most keyboards do allow you to use it as basically a navigation cluster um, with the page up page down this one actually has the arrows as well um, so you have all of your you know your standard keys you got delete got insert 
those are two very important ones for me and home and act but we got page up page down here and here so you've got your choices as to where the keys are that you want and if the software is anything like the 75 it does allow you for some basic key remapping also has some instructions on how to remove keycaps and how to replace the switches now let's take a look at what the lights look like all right they are pretty decent they aren't the brightest let's see what we got at the highest all right and then let's cycle through some effects And then we can cycle through colors. I like when the uh, the effects are nice and simple. Um, instead of like the Y for this and the A for that. This makes sense. So um, we got a pretty quick sleep mode, but we're not connected to anything right now. So that, that space bar is going to need some work. Oh my goodness. So, just because you got screw wrench stabilizers doesn't mean everything's going to be hunky dory. Now, oh yeah, the stabs are they're loose in there. That's probably what's causing the rattling. You can see the housing moves back and forth. There shouldn't be any looseness. That's probably why that rattle is coming. But having this dense or this um big hollow spot in here definitely isn't helping now here's one thing that one of the reasons i do not like uh thinner body keycaps because you can do this if you can bend keycaps with your fingers eh, that's that's gonna be not i mean these are thick enough they pass my one millimeter thickness but how how much is it infilled like is it i mean if you're if you're familiar with 3D printers, you can print something that's a particular width, but if you have only 5% infill, it's not going to be very strong. And this is quite hollow. It's almost like a little echo chamber in and of itself, but I should not be able to squeeze keycaps with my fingers. This one is now permanently warped from me just squeezing it. So... Now, I don't mind pre-builds, but at least make it a decent pre-built. I know that if I keep pressing on this, it's just going to break. So let me see if I can try to get it back into a kind of shape. So now this keyboard does retail on Asia's website for $160. So let's talk about that. We saw the keycaps on there. It's not very promising. $160, I'm gonna expect to get something a little better, better quality. This whole aluminum steel plate top, I'm not sure what that's about. It says you can interchange them, but there's nowhere on the site that I saw any aluminum plates or PC plates or any different materials. But just to compare, this is a Halo 96 dealing with just slightly shorter dimensions but when we have these keycaps and we pull them off well they do have the ghost bar so it might not be very fair but i cannot bend that ah, no matter how much i put into it that keycap ain't bending now what's the thickness of this this is 1.2 1.3 Oh, it's holding at 1.2. 1.3. So it's literally the same thickness as these. Oh, I guess this one's actually space bar. Oh. oh, they have different width bodies. The top of it is 1.1. The bottom of it is... Right at 1.2, 1.3. So, you know, this has 2.4 in Bluetooth. It has 
a break here so my fingers are going to be able to find the arrow keys without problem, without having to look, because, hey, oh, there it is. I know where my arrow keys are at. Here, I'm going to be, like, either having to look from over here, or having to find the shift, and then come down and be like, am I? I think that's the arrow keys. Yep, no more there. It's, there's not really much of an indicator I'm going to end up looking, because it's going to be quicker than just doing this. I'm on the keys. I mean, that's it. That's one of the reasons that blocker is there. Because uh, you still have it compact, but you could still find the keys. Now, of course, we don't have, we have the 1U0, whereas they have the full 2U. But this keyboard sells for $20 less than this keyboard. This is stock. This one also has a really, really cool light effect. <laughs> so not only do you have light on the side, you have light on the inside border. And this is comes fully pre-built. It's um, 139, 129 or 139, but it goes on sale for 129. So, but yeah, this is, uh, and, I mean, granted, they both have pockets. This one's going to be a lot less likely to fall out because of its position. So, I just want to give that comparison because I think it's only fair. Uh, yes, we do have keyboards that are becoming much better in stock products, but you still should look and compare and find which one you like. Now, this one does have a different design does have floating keys some people prefer it over the um, recessed keys so this might actually work out better you might really just want that 2u0 on the numpad that's fine i'm just doing my best to inform everybody what is out there and what is available just the specs today we took a look at the azio cascade 98 it is a three mode 103 key 98% pre-built it comes pre-loaded with ABS shine through keycaps and your selection of Gatoron pros either red or brown the weight of this keyboard is 1111 grams while the battery is 4000 milliamp hours it does state that it comes with an anodized top plate but it also states that it can be replaced but there was no secondary options on the website it also includes screw-in stabilizers. It does have good dampening with plate and PCB as well as case dampeners. And it is six key NKRO. It has three device slots for Bluetooth 5 and has a standard 2.4 and USB connectivity as well. The chin of this keyboard sits at 18 millimeters, which is quite low while the back sits at 29 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of six degrees. Using the first included set of feet will raise the back up to 37 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to nine degrees. Using the final set of flip out feet will raise the back to 40 millimeters and the angle to 12 degrees. All right, so today we took a look at the ASIO Cascade 98. Uh, I'm gonna link the 75 in uh, the description so that you guys can compare but just from my memory I think that the 75 actually sounded better than this one but I'll have to retest now I will be coming back to both of these to mod them because I very confident I can make them sound much better than they do stock uh, I've got to say while I do like this keyboard I am trying to understand the pricing for it. Um, yes, it does have screw-in stabilizers, but beyond that, we've got a lot of standard features we can find across many other keyboards. I have to question where is the value that they think that's in this keyboard, especially looking at the market the way it is today. Um, like I said, I like this keyboard. I think it should be priced much lower than it is. Um, 
and they should be a little bit more clear about the top case and if they're going to say that it's exchangeable well then show me the options because if there are a pc plate or an aluminum plate or, or different materials that i could choose from i would love to give it a chance but i can't even find where to order them on their website it has that feature but you can't get them anywhere i don't know um the communication on this seems to be a little off anyway that said i have seen this on sale on amazon and other sites for less than they listed on their website which is very common with these keyboards so i would say at a much lower price i think this keyboard is somewhat competitive in the market based on what we have nowadays in the off the shelf or in stock product market but i think that um when this was put together and designed i think the market was different so uh, the market's moving at a very quick pace and what is becoming available now for this price and lower is it's just there's a much better selection so it's hard to say i would pick this board over that board because uh, i wouldn't i mean i gotta be honest and i like it but it's priced too high. When you compare this to what else is available at this price range and below, and you can find something very comparable, if not almost better, minus those screw and stabs. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, they're screwed and stabs, but they're not even in all the way. So I just... And the keycaps. Come on, guys. These keycaps are... They're just, they're poor quality. Yes, I know some people want Shine 3 and you guys want with the North. That's fine. But I've seen plenty of Shine 3 keycaps that are 1.5, 1.6, even 1.7 millimeters in thickness. And I can't bend them with my fingers. Um, I'm disabled. I have actually really bad problems with the nerves in my hands. Well, other nerves as well. But I can't, I don't have that much strength in my hands. And the fact that I can bend it, I mean... If I were to hand one of these to my son and say, hey, bend it, he'd probably break it. So, uh, not that you know we should be going around squeezing keycaps, but they shouldn't be able to be squozen by, by hands. Especially somewhat disabled hands. But, anyway. Um, like I said, I like some of the features of this keyboard. But I have to question, where is the value proposition? That said, I'm still interested to take a look at what they're going to be doing with their low-profile boards. Um, and I would, if they do have different plate materials, I would give that a chance. I will be coming back to both the 75 and this one, the 98, and doing some modding because I'm confident that I can get some better sound out of it. But one of the first things that's got to go are the keycaps. I can work with the switches. They're Gatoron Pros. But these keycaps... These keycaps are, are a huge detriment. If these were better keycaps, I might even argue that, okay, well, it's maybe a little overpriced, but it's good. But the keycaps just, they just sound cheap, but they are. I can squeeze them. I shouldn't be able to squeeze keycaps with my fingers. Not to the point to where they're getting ready to break or they're going to warp permanently. Those are my thoughts on it. What do you guys think about it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the description below. Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test of the ASIO Cascade 98 in space gray dark. And I'd like to hear what you guys think about it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What did you think of the sound test? Anyway, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.